Welcome to my channel, Custom Scrapbook Design by Christy Stubbs. And welcome to another installment of my Scrappin' Saturday series. So this Saturday, I'm also partaking in Saturday Morning Makes. So you can search the hashtag SatMornMakes, hosted by Jillian Norwood. And you can check out all the other designers and creators and see what they're up to on this Saturday. So for my layout this week, I am using the Simple Stories Retro Summer Collection. And I've been debating for about the past 10 minutes whether or not I should open another collection or if I should try and use what little bit of scraps I have left. So you can go back and watch my project share of... Well, actually, it was the tutorial, and if you don't want to watch the tutorial and you want to just skip to the very end, you can find the flip through of this little 4x6 album, and this used the Retro Summer Collection as well, and I used most of the collection kit. So what I have left is actually just a few scraps, some of the cut-aparts, uh, the two by two cut aparts, the back side of that one, and a couple full sheets as well. Two full sheets, and then I've got the sticker sheet here. So, what I've decided to do for this layout is actually try and use up some more of this collection rather than open a new one. Basically, because I have tons of stickers left, and I want to challenge myself just a little bit to see if I can't. Do something with that so I did go to my inventory and pull a piece of the buttercup and a piece of the robin's egg and these are both by simple stories one side is polka dotted I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera or not and then the other side is the solid um, color stock so I did pull two colors that are pretty prevalent within the collection and thought we would try and come up with a layout. Another thing I'm gonna do a little different this week than I have done in the past is I've got photos. So I've got three photos and I've already trimmed them down and they're all odd sizes, so they're not gonna be like my standard format format of like a four by four or four by six or five by five. You know, I've got kind of random sizes and we're gonna go ahead and just work with that. I trimmed this ice cream picture up a little bit smaller than the other two. I may end up trimming this second picture so that it's the same size as this one. And actually the more that I look at it, I think I will just trim that real quick and make that the same size. That might be easier to work with. And it measures almost four and three quarters. So I'm gonna trim this one to be about the same. Looks like I can trim that off without cutting our heads off. And then that way, that might come out just a little bit more uniform. So we'll do that. All right, so I think for this layout, we're going to use this yellow, this buttercup color as the background. So we're going to go ahead and trim off that branding strip. And I've got a full sheet of this journaling elements one. And I really do like some of these journaling elements, so we may may end up using some of these. I've also got a few of the tags left too, so I kind of want to use some of them. So let's lay out our pictures and then I am gonna end up matting these at some point in time because that yellow does not look good on straight on the yellow. But my thought was maybe to mat them something like that. And then I'm also gonna pull in the foam stickers 
I have not opened these yet. I did not use any of these in my mini album, mainly because of the thickness. But for my layout, that's not really an issue. And the sticker that I'm wanting to maybe use is the word ice cream. So we actually just took this picture two days ago, picked my grandson up after school, second to last day of school, and we went and had ice cream together at the local little um, drugstore. So I think I wanna use the word ice cream up there. And then I think I'm going to kind of back this with the pink. So I'm gonna cut this, and this is my scientific way of doing things. I guess I will measure. Let's see. I think we're gonna go at about eight inches. So the first thing I wanna do is cut off my branding strip. And then if I'm going eight, I'm gonna cut off four inches here. So we've got four inches left. And of course I cut it the wrong way. I kinda of, I wanted to cut it so I had these two at the bottom, but too late for that. Should have paid more attention. I think I want to lay that straight on there. And I'm going to backtrack that. I think we're going to take a little bit off the side too. And I think we will take two inches off. The side and I tend to get things crooked when they're this small on this particular cutter. So I'm going to add my ruler to it just to make sure I get everything straight. All right. So the reason I took the two inches off is because then I want to kind of Have that inch border on both sides and I was gonna go all the way around but as I'm looking at it I think I'm gonna still bring this top all the way up and before we go any further I think we'll go ahead and ink the edges if you've been following me at all you know I really like to ink and I'm not going to ink the bottom because I kind of have a plan to use the long border strip on the sticker sheet. So I think I'm going to carry that across the bottom of this. So I'm not going to ink the bottom. I'll save just a little bit of time by not inking that. And maybe we'll just have just a small border up there. So that's going to be the base or the start of this page. So we're going to go ahead and stick that down. And get that set. And we want to make sure the non-inked edge is at the bottom. And I am just kind of eyeballing, but I'm gonna have to turn this towards me to eyeball it. And I've got a lot of stuff on my desk kind of in the way here. So let's clear some of this out. Okay, and I'm not gonna press that down really hard. If you, <laughs> again, if you've been following me at all, you know that I'll probably be pulling that back up. All right, so now that sticker I was talking about is 
this one. And that was on the sticker sheet. And I'm gonna put that across the bottom of this. And it looks like I basically have one ruffle, little tiny less than one ruffle on each side of this. Looks like the shade to the outside window of the ice cream parlor. All right, now we've got our pictures. And those I am gonna wanna mat, and I think we'll pull in some of this color here to mat these pictures with. I think that that adds a nice little contrast there. So let's go ahead and mat those quick. And I've got a full sheet of that robin's egg, so we'll use that. And I think that we're gonna go ahead and round our corners. I have not been doing a lot of that lately, so I think we'll do that for this particular layout. And I'll round the corners of the photos first. Our beautiful ice cream. They have really good hard ice cream down there. We don't usually do that. So it was a nice treat and it was one of the rare occasions my husband was off to be able to spend the time with us as well. So it was a fun afternoon. All right, so when I am actually matting my pictures, I will take and line the first picture up and try and line it up so that it's got the same distance on the outer edges. And there's not gonna be room to line all three up and still get uh, the same border all the way around. I mean, it might be possible, but you know, that would be me relying on the fact that I can cut everything absolutely perfect on the first try. And I'm just gonna be the first to say that I probably will not be able to do that. So, we're just gonna go ahead and line that next one up underneath and give plenty of room to be able to trim that properly. And then the first cut I'm gonna make is gonna be underneath this picture. And now I've got the same border on all three sides and then we're gonna line it up so we get that same border on the fourth side. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, and it looks like I might be just a tad thick on that side. My eyes are not being all that nice to me today. Struggling a little bit to see that picture in the trimmer. Clear a little photo or paper dust off of there. Let's see if I can get this one on the first try. So we're just gonna trim equal distance all the way around. And then I'm gonna go through and use my corner rounder on those mats. And then we just have that last one to cut. Cut that evenly all the way around again. And then round those corners. 
All right. Now, clean our work surface up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my ink, my pad I use for inking to catch all of the excess. And I just picked that up at the dollar store. Works really good for catching all of the little pieces of foam that come off my dauber from being used up. It's getting to where I probably need to change it. So I'll probably have to do that after this project. It's been uh, broken rather well. And I'm just using the vintage photo on this. I really liked the vintage photo with this particular collection. I thought it was a good soft way to do the inking on the edges of the paper and not be too bold. Okay. Now we've got all three of them matted. Let's see how they fit. And then I had my stickers that I wanted to add. There's ice, cream. Okay, now I've got stickers and then I've got the die cuts that I had left. Got this fun little set of lights we could add to that corner. I don't think we'll add any of the rest of these foam stickers. I would maybe if we had an ice cream cone, but there really isn't an ice cream cone in there. So let's see. We've got a fun ice cream cone here that we might add. We've got ice cream parlor. We might add that down here. Let's see. Might even use this one. So I'm just going to start adding some embellishments to it. And this layout was actually a real simple um, and easy layout that you could replicate pretty easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling some of the different pieces to accent or finish off the decorating. And then this layout will be done. how I wanted to lay everything out and now I'm just putting the pictures down because that will give me the base of how everything's going to lay out on the page and I've done my journaling which if you are a scrapbooker you know the importance of journaling if you're just getting started the importance of journaling is 
the fact that your journaling should basically tell the story so that if at some point in time you are not there to tell the story, your scrapbook page should be able to do all of that. Um, the only thing that I don't have written down on this uh, um, tag so far is the date. And I just need to go back in my camera and check the date and I will add the date to the page so that that is in there because I am scrapbooking out of order too since I did just pull this picture off of my phone from the other day. I am nowhere near to being that caught up in my scrapbooking so I will need to make sure the date is on there and there's plenty of room to add that. I could add that anywhere on this tag. I could even add it on the picture somewhere if I wanted to. I kind of like the little scene I've got set up in the corner down here with all of the ephemera pieces. So this collection for the little album that I made, I actually did not use a ton of the ephemera pieces. So I actually have quite a few of those pieces left over. And by setting a little scene to decorate your page, you can use up a lot of those pieces. So I thought that was kind of a fun way to do that down in this corner. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add the inking to the edge of all of those pieces just to kind of give them a little more definition and help them pop off of that yellow background a little bit better. Now we may even take and lift a couple of these up possibly on some foam. Maybe we'll lift the word delicious up and then everything can be tucked flat behind it. That might be, that might be what we do. And I'm just lightly inking. I'm not worrying about inking every little edge of these. Like I'm not going to ink the inside of the glasses so much. Just doing a little bit to kind of highlight the edges or define the edges a little bit better. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop right there and set this scene up. And we are gonna lift this up. I'm gonna use some foam tape again. I used a lot of foam tape on the tag. I just wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be any spots that could get compressed down on, the, on that tag. This piece I'm not quite as concerned about and I actually want to maintain some space behind it so I can tuck some of that ephemera. And I just tend to use a little wet adhesive with my foam tape because I, you never know where I might pick foam tape up. Some of it I order, I order in. Other times I'll pick it up at the dollar store and I don't, maybe necessarily trust the quality as much. So I tend to use some wet adhesive just to make sure that I'm not gonna have any problems with that in the future. And the ephemera pieces I am putting down with my tape runner rather than a wet adhesive again because I tend to I'm actually going to switch that whole layout up, maybe alternate how I had that. Um, I tend to move things around a lot, so I want to use the tape runner and then that allows me to be able to move that these pieces around, whereas if I use the glue, I'm pretty well stuck with where I put them. And again, if you follow me at all up till this point, 
you know that I tend to move things around quite a bit. I never have anything set in the perfect spot on the first try, it doesn't seem like. So there's a little, a little scene with ephemera pieces there. And then I think we will add the two ice cream, ice cream cone and the popsicle on this side. And then we've got a few more ephemera pieces to add up above. I'm going to do a little inking on all of those as well and just set those in place. decided not to use the camera and then I also want to just bring in some of the word stickers that I've got on the bottom here and I think that that I'm kind of backtracking now I might have to pull up a couple things I told you I never get anything set exactly right and I might pull these cherries up. And see how this fits. Kind of runs into Grandpa's face a little bit. Yep, I think I'll just go ahead and put those cherries back down. I'm second guessing myself. And I was going to use this ice cream parlor as well, and I forgot about that. Dang it. I had a vision in my head of the things I was going to use down in on this, and then I forgot about some of them. going to be the final layout. It's kind of got a lot going on, but um, it captures the fun we had that afternoon after school. So 
Thank you so much for sticking with me and joining me on another installment of my Scrap and Saturday series. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future installments. I appreciate you hanging with me. All of the products in this layout can be found on my website. I will link it below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.